Hey guys, it's Uncle Fester. Welcome back to Horsepower Warehouse. Today we are going to take a look at two really cool pieces of automotive engineering and then we're going to finish up today's episode with a little bit of shop talk. I'm going to show you guys what's going on on the restoration side. So welcome back to my channel. First and foremost, I want to show you guys my new V-Dub here. So not only is this a cool piece of automotive engineering in itself, this one has a kind of a rare option. Uh, it's not super rare because there's a lot of them produced, but most people took them out. And that is the V-Dub automatic stick shift or the auto stick. So basically this is a car that is a stick shift without a clutch or an automatic that you have to shift. Um, it's a four speed transmission, like a standard transmission, but it actually has a torque converter in place of a, the number two gear, if I'm not mistaken. There is already a really cool video that was done by the Jalopnik guys. I'm gonna do the link in description below. They've already covered the ins and outs of this transmission and why it's so awesome. I'm just gonna really quickly run you through, you know, what I see here. I love this reverse low gear one and two. So basically how this works is you got your standard shifter here, gas, brake, no clutch. There is an electronic solenoid underneath the shifter that knows when you are touching it and that actually engages the clutch for you. So I really, really love the idea of that. I don't know if it was used in anything else. Uh, basically how you work this car though is you put it over into one for in town driving so it's got reverse low one and two one is essentially third gear so one will take you up to i believe 45 miles an hour so for in town cruising i mean you really never have to shift it out of one you can and then go down into two um, low is what uses the torque converter if i'm not mistaken but again just link in description below jalapnik guys absolutely killed it with their video he even got a whiteboard out and, and drew a picture for you so i'm not going to go that far i really really love the idea of it never after having driven this thing around the building, it's a really, really neat piece of automotive engineering. So if you guys are as curious as I am about design, uh, I highly suggest watching that video. Um, another really, really cool piece of automotive engineering. I showed you guys last week my Measure Schmidt. I don't know if you guys are familiar with how this thing goes in reverse. That's what really caught my eye here is the reverse actuation. So you might be thinking, Junior, what the heck are you talking about? Okay, this thing has reverse. It does, but the way that it goes into reverse is that engine spins backwards. So it's got two sets of points. Basically in the ignition switch, it works here. Standard ignition for forward is, if I were to turn it, it would turn on, but you can push in, you see that light turn on, and then you could activate it in reverse. That actually spins the engine backwards so essentially you have i believe five reverse gears so in all actuality you can probably click 50 or 60 miles an hour in reverse in this dangerous little guy which is absolutely awesome to me i wish i had enough funds to make a youtube video of actually doing that in a real measure schmidt but this is like a fifty thousand dollar thing right now um, and up but the cheapest ones i found actually for sale are like in the fifty thousand dollar range so really really neat that they found a way to make the engine spin backwards in order to get this thing into reverse and i had all sorts of stupid questions rolling around in my head is is the intake now the exhaust well no it doesn't really work like that i mean i understand like cam profile is symmetrical so a cam will work the same forwards as backwards but things like the fuel pump how does that really work I, they probably had quite a few engineering feats to get over in order to make that happen. Um, comment down below, do you guys know of another engine that actually spins forwards for, rever for forwards and reverse for reverse? I, I've never seen an engine that can spin backwards and actually run. That's a two stroke. Really, really neat. I'm not going to gloss past my paint guy's newest output here. Josh, if you're watching this, man, good job. 
as always. Absolutely fantastic. This is my Fuelie, by the way, guys, if you aren't familiar with this car. It's going into the shop, coming up soon. Gotta love the classic black and red fuel injected. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Let me show you what we got going on over here. So this week, as I told you guys last, we are actually going to be sending the benchmark survivor car to upcoming auction because we feel like this is you know not the right candidate for my level of restoration this thing is absolutely awesome as it sits you can see that we had the car wet sanded and buffed so it looks absolutely fantastic that's why some of the emblems are on i put on the rear script but that's where i stopped on friday car looks absolutely fantastic guys so we're prepping this for upcoming auction if you want to see it i believe it's going to be Mecum Indy coming up. I think it's May. I'm, I don't personally attend the auctions, um, but that's going to be a, a really, really nice car going across the block there. So someone will, will have the opportunity to buy a true, really, really rare benchmark trophy. Um, I did spend about a day underneath the 63. Again, further cleaning the bottom of it. I really, really spend a lot of time going probably harder than I should with getting the bottoms just immaculate. Um, you can see I have one of the wheel wells coated there and I'm, I'm just making my way through. I have the, the seat rails in and I, I'm starting to assemble. I still have to paint the engine or the firewall forward so the engine bay is gonna get coated coming up on Monday. So making good progress with that. I'm not gonna show you too much until it looks real nice cause it's, it's definitely getting there. Big block car. I have almost all the parts I need to get going on that. My 64, 365 horse. So this is a solid lifter, small block. I know I don't usually show you guys under the hood until I've started on it, but that's how it came to us. It's gonna be a lot prettier than this when I'm all done, rest assured. But I'm kind of curious what you guys think. And this was a question that was proposed by Senior. Do you think that a small block solid lifter or higher horsepower small block is faster than a big block car? Comment down below. I'm kind of curious what you guys think. Might be a future episode coming up where we actually get these out to the drag strips and, and test the theory. But I'm curious what you guys think. The consensus is kind of towards the small block being faster than the 427, 435. But I'm curious, you know, what your guys' opinion is on that. You can see my 65. This is a frame off car. I apologize for it being dusty, but it's going to get wet sanded and buffed. You can see carpet has been installed by yours truly. I really nitpick all of my seams and corners, so I get my carpet kits to lay out really, really good. So I'm happy with how that came out. This car got wet sand and buffed. We're gonna be doing some stuff in the engine bay just to get it one step closer to me being happy with it. Um, and then this one will be for sale. You can see aftermarket AC. So this is uh, gonna be a more comfortable car to drive. 67, 427, 435 horse car coming along as well. Um, we've made, we're, we're nitpicking at it. I probably spent six hours total this week on this car. So we're, we're making some progress, mainly interior stuff right now. You can see my drag, my baby sitting there. Um, got the Canton oil pan in. We're setting engine height right now. I'm going to have to clearance out my windshield cowl, um, cause I'm going to be running probably a Holly high ram style intake. I may or may not do a sharer intercooler on top of the Holly High Ram, I might do, you know, air to water intercoolers up front, twin turbo, precision 78, 75s. So that's gonna be a, a neat thing coming up. We have the paint for this, Tropical Glitz provided. So that is going, it's scheduled to go to paint once my Nassau 66 customer's car gets back. So I'm, I'm Excited to get that painted, but I'm even more excited to get my Nassau 66 back because I've been waiting on that car for so long that I'm just rearing to go on that thing. You can see the 59. Sean has spent about a day and a half um, working with getting all of the new Art Morrison four-link stuff in. So that's coming out really well. You can see the 
nine inch Mosier rear end sitting under there. Um, so we're making good progress on that. Strange rear coilovers, so nice stuff. Nice stuff is going in this car. Um, that's also a ZZ4 Chevrolet crate motor that has side draft Webers. So I can't wait to show that to you guys. You can see the fully rebuilt transmission for my customer's 63 over there. Um, I, I'm not gonna uncover this this week. I'll show you guys next week, but it's, oh, it's coming out so nice. Fully rebuilt rear end, looks oh, so good. Um, that transmission was a mess inside, so I'm very, very glad that we just did a complete overhaul on the tranny. Um, all the sink rows were worn and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm really glad we did that. I mean, that's kind of par for the course. Sometimes you rip open these trannies because this is a Borg. This is not a Muncie. Borgs are not as strong typically as the Muncie counterpart, counterparts. Um, so the Borgs, you almost always want to check. Muncies, you, I check anyway. I always do the full rebuilds, but a lot of times I find the Muncies don't really have worn components in the same way that the Borgs do. So that's a Borg T10. And doing a little bit. But Junior, surely you're a Corvette guy and you don't work on floor machines. Well, I've done everything. I don't know if you guys know that about me. I've restored Amphicars. I've done Model Ts. I've done everything. It just seems like right now Corvettes are swamping my shop because it's a, it's a ball. It's like a snowball effect. It keeps rolling. Other people see me working on these Corvettes. They want to bring me their Corvettes and it, it's, it's blown out of hand. I've done everything and I, I love doing all sorts of restorations. It's just right now I'm a Corvette guy, I guess. But comment down below, what is faster? A 60, 64, 365 solid lifter car or a 67, 427, 435? I'm curious what you guys think. Is the big block gonna be faster? I really wanna get these out to Brainton Motorsports Park. Um, but maybe if I get enough comments and we stir up enough interest, we'll get that, we'll get that going for you guys. But thank you guys so much for joining me. Until next time, take care.